Hey everyone, and welcome to our third episode of the Comcast NBC Universal Sports Tech webinar. My name is Natalie Connors. I'm a part of the Sports Tech marketing team, and I get to serve as your host today. With that being said, let me introduce you to the panelists that will join us for our 45 minute discussion on all things about our accelerator program. I'm happy to have Jose Vietes here as a panelist today. Jose's experience from both sides makes him the perfect guest. He's founded five startups, one of which was acquired. He's worked as a designer at Google, and he's now the portfolio director at Boomtown Accelerators. Jose, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, everyone. Glad to be here. Our next guest, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Donenfeld, is the investment director at Comcast Sports Tech. His background in advanced technologies will help guide this conversation towards innovation and his experience advising startups will give us the insights that our startups need. Jeffrey, welcome. Hi, good to, good to see you. Good to see everybody. Jose and Jeffrey, it's getting pretty close to the application deadline date, which is the yeah. 15th of this month. For founders that are in the midst of the applications or thinking about applying to the accelerator, do you have a word to, of advice to encourage them and give them that little last push that they might need? Um, yeah, we, we are getting close to the deadline and we're excited to, uh, to, to read your application. I, I'd say we're getting close to the application. And if you're thinking about your applying, you've got it halfway done or uh, your idea is still kind of formulating, go ahead and, and, and get it into us. We'd, uh, we'd love to hear at, at least the beginnings or what you have, uh, have in mind and, and, and bring the conversation up from there. We're not expecting fully fleshed out, uh, completely built businesses or anything. We're, we're an accelerator. So we're interested to hear what you're, uh, what you're thinking about and, and uh, working on. Jose, do you have any advice to give them that one last push? Yeah, I'd agree. I'd say go for it. Uh, get your application in. Uh, what we're looking for are both good teams uh, that are building um, that are building really promising companies. But specifically, we're looking for technologies that our that our partners, which you see up here, uh, are are going to be interested in. And and what they're looking for is changing all the time. So, uh, you know, there might be a company that uh, may not look like a fit at first, but then you know they come through, and and uh, one of our partners tells us, hey, is our company doing X or Y, and uh, if you're in that pool, we're able to actually give you guys consideration and see if you're a fit. Um, so, and so we can give a bit of a heads up by when you see our uh, investment theses and, and verticals. But um, if, if you know if you're in the pool, you at least have a chance to be considered. And if anything, get in front of our radars um, for for a future cohort. Awesome. So to everyone tuning in with us today, welcome. Um, we want you all to be involved as well. Um, this webinar is for you. We, we want to answer your questions and everything. So use the Q&A feature down at the bottom of the screen. That will allow you to ask any questions and I'll go through them and pick out, you know, the ones that we want to answer and we'll make sure we try to get to every question. Um, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Today's episode, we won't only be talking about applications, we'll be talking about the exciting things that happen once you're accepted into the program. So before we dive into all of the ins and outs, Jose, do you wanna give us a brief overview of the Accelerator program itself? Absolutely, so our programs are, are customized every single time we run one. Uh, we run over 13 programs in uh, Boulder and three in Atlanta. Uh, invested in over 150 companies that we've never run the same program twice. Every time we run a program, we have over 50 experiments that we run through, uh, that we take that learning and we apply it to the next one. And we take that in combination with the types of companies that are actually coming through, and we customize the experience to make sure that we're serving the entrepreneurs going through each and every cohort in the best way possible. Uh, so what I will tell you now uh, is kind of as high level as I can be before actually having selected our companies. Uh, so it will change, but as a, as a summary, it's a 12-week program uh, where we focus on, you know, in general, validating and, and making sure that you're on the right direction as a, as a business, um, and then putting fuel on the fire during the first, middle four weeks of the program, uh, or the, the second four weeks of the program, uh, and whether that is with partnerships, with um, teaching you how to have conversations with corporate partners, or fundraising, or sales, or whatever it is, and then towards the end of the program, focusing on kind of scaling out what you're already doing and seeing how to make sure that you can do that um, both post-program um, and closing the deals that you've already have in your pipeline um, and then figuring out how to make sure that we keep that conversation going after you graduate. Because uh, it's not just 12 weeks, it's, you know, for the lifetime of your company and even afterwards. We have companies that 
um, you know, I'm still talking to from seven years ago from our first cohort that I have weekly calls with. Uh, and we have founders that end up selling their company or moving on to a new business. Uh, and then they end up applying again or becoming mentors and staying involved. So it's really, it really is a family and we're excited to, to work with each of you. Yeah, I love that we can, you know, never get rid of our alumni and that we always, you know, continue to talk to them. So, um, Jeffrey, with that being said, can you also tell everyone about the eight investment areas that we focus on? Yeah, sure. So we, we do have eight investment areas and this is kind of um, our attempt to, to bucket out different areas of technology and, and innovation. Before I talk about these, though, I, uh, it, it's worth noting that these are, are made up categories that we feel like encapsulate things the, the best, but we're open to, to all sorts of ideas from, from uh, anywhere, um, uh, whatever scope it is, um, whether that's something that directly fits into one of these areas or something where, where you're saying, this doesn't fit, but I think it's, it would be really interesting for you and there, there is an application here. We, we wanna hear about it. So with that, um, we look at, at, at technologies for fan and player engagement. We look at a lot of athlete uh, player uh, performance, uh, performance technologies and tracking and everything. We look at a lot of media and entertainment. In addition to the sports leagues uh, who, who we're, we're partners with, you know, we're also partnered with uh, NBC Sports and, and Sky Sports. So lots of media entertainment, as well as Comcast as a whole. Venue and event innovation, uh, huge big, big arenas all the way down to to, to small, uh, small playing spaces um, and even virtual, uh, virtual venues. Uh, team and coach success, the business of sports making all the gears turn, uh, fantasy sports and betting, which is a, uh, a more recently hot topic now that uh, uh, sports betting has, has started to be legalized more widely. And then finally, like I mentioned earlier, esports is, is, a, is a huge category for us. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I yeah. know a lot of hard work went into, you know, forming those eight investment areas and Definitely. a lot of extensive research, but I do think it's important to note that you should still apply, even if you think you may or may not fit into one um, in some type of way. To totally. And you know what, it, 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 you could argue that the most interesting ideas are, are the, one, the teams that come to us and say, we've got this idea. It doesn't fit in with what anyone has ever done. And we're so excited. We want to talk to you about it and, and figure out what to do next year. Right. Yeah. Of course, we're looking at the hottest trends in the sports tech industry, but yeah. you know, it's out there, right? Who knows? Um, yeah. So with that being said about applications and applying to be a part of all of this, um, Jose, how much time should an applicant um, generally spend on this application? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. We um, we make sure that we, we've adjusted our application over the years uh, and we try to make sure that every question we ask is relevant uh, for you as a founder and valuable. Uh, yes, there's certain things that we need to know and we need to learn about you um, that, you know, what kind of category you think you fit in. But besides those, um, we try to make sure that there are questions that, um, that make you think about things that, uh, that are valuable to you. And so um, if, if you already know, there shouldn't be questions in there that are surprising. Uh, and if you haven't asked them already, you should be asking them. Um, so in theory, uh, uh, I think the record for the fastest application we've gotten done is probably around 20 minutes or so, 18 minutes, I think, where, where they started one and then finished it, uh, you know, about 20 minutes later. Um, and it was, it was actually really strong. They didn't shortcut anything. They were very thorough with, with their answering. And it's because they knew the answers to these questions because they've been pitching their company. They've been, you know, talking to customers, et cetera. So, um, they, they, these are all things that they already knew. And if they don't know uh, the answers to those questions, we found uh, we t a lot of teams tell us, I'm, I'm thankful that we had to go through the application because it's ha forced us to ask ourselves the answer to those questions. Um, and then they use those things in the future. So um, I'd say on average, uh, to do a good job, you know, teams are probably spending 45 to an hour, uh, 45 minutes to an hour working on these. But that can vary, you know, as much as two and a half, three hours. Uh, if, if you have no idea, um, if you have vague ideas about the answers, then maybe up to, you know, four or five hours if you have to do market research and stuff like that. But honestly, if you haven't done market research as to competitors um, and, and, and the size of your market, et cetera, those are things that you should know. Um, and so I, I believe it's time well spent. Okay, awesome. And is there anything on the application that's more important than others or any tips that you'd give people to, you know, parts to really focus on and really hone in on? 
Uh, absolutely. Um, I, I mentioned in, in the past, the team, uh, the team is the most important thing for us. Uh, you can have a great idea, but if you, we have no information on you as a founder or you as your founding team, um, we're probably not going to spend more time meeting uh, you uh, uh, because for us, really, the founding, the, the individuals running the company are the most important part of our investments. Um, so make sure that you um, speak to, you know, you have enough information as to what you're doing. Specifically, you as a founder, what your background is, whether that's your LinkedIn, plus those additional questions about past experiences. And then make sure that you have information either about co-founders or employees that are full-time, um, but who else is working on your company? Uh, tell us about them. Make sure that, you know, we've, I've seen multiple companies that say, oh, yes, you know, I have, you know, these uh, two or three other founders, and they don't even tell me their names. They don't tell me anything about them, so I can't even spend the time to look them up. Um, but, you know, and that, that already is extra work uh, for me as I try to research um, the viability of your company. But if you can make it easy for us and, and give us LinkedIn, give us information on the founding team. Um, again, we'll, we'll take a strong founding team uh, with a pretty cool idea uh, over a weak founding team with, a, with an amazing idea any day of the week. Because we know that they'll get to that next stage and, and make that company successful. So Jeffrey, so Jose's talking about the importance of, you know, really putting forth your team and all your founders and stuff. Um, Wally from Nigeria asked us in the chat, do we have a history of picking solo founders in the accelerator? Um, can you kind of elaborate on what we look for in the types of teams, please? We, yeah, sure. We, we don't have a distinct history of picking specifically for solo founders. Um, it has happened in the past and, and we really look at it on a on a case by case basis based on the merits and how the how the founder and the rest of their team around them um, can come together to be uh, uh, to be a good candidate and, and user of the program. That being said, the program is intense. It's it's customized classes, workshops, lectures that take a lot of your time, um, lead mentors, uh, you know, the whole sector of, of, of mentors, partners, connecting with everybody, pitches, pitch practice, demo day, et cetera. And it's a lot that we throw at you. In addition, you want to be able to, to run your company and move forward on all of that. So, so typically we like to have at least uh, two core team members really able to dedicate um, you know, full time to, to working with us in the program and running the business. Um, and then additionally, you know, if you have a larger team, um, we'd love to, to, to you know, have the, the rest of the team uh, join in the, the program as well. We can also uh, work with you on the schedule to be flexible with bringing the key members of your team in at the, the right times and making sure you have the resources you need when you need them. Um, but we really like to, to have that that level of in-person commitment to give you a, a good chance of, of really being productive in, in the program. So that's, that's a little insight on that. Awesome. And, I, and actually I'll, 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 I'll do a quick clarification on that to summarize that in case it was missed because it's really important. Um, it, it's okay to have a solo founder if you've got a team behind you. Uh, so right. if you've got at least two people working full time on your company, they don't have to be founders. Uh, but at least two individuals working full time on the company yeah. is strongly preferred. Solo founder without anybody else, that becomes a problem because of, you can't handle all the work that comes through it. But we'll still consider you. Uh, it'll just be a, a bit of a disadvantage. Sure. Awesome. And, and while we're talking teams, um, I think it's important to ask, does the whole team need to be there all at once in Atlanta? Not necessarily. We we like to have, like we mentioned, the you know the the core team really able to uh, to to join us and and be there. The whole team doesn't have to be there the full time, and and um, you know we'll work with you beforehand to look at the schedule, what modules are coming up, and what we're working on when, so that you can schedule your team's travel. We know that you're working hard on this business at the same time as going through the program, and that we're specifically supporting you to, to do that. So we're with you. Awesome. So um, let's move forward a little bit. So when founders go through this application process, which again, I want to stress the deadline is in four days on the 15th. So let's make sure we're getting those in. But um, if they are accepted into the program, um, how will they be notified, Jose? And then when will they be notified? Absolutely. So um, you will, once you start interviewing you, we have uh, multiple rounds of interviews that will happen. Um, and so you will be uh, made aware of kind of where you're at in, in the process uh, once you get that first round interview. Um, 
we i believe the dates uh we don't have the heart commitment date for final acceptances we will be accepting companies as um, they reach the final stages of interviews um, but we, we the idea is to have everyone selected and notified before the, you know before the holidays um, but uh how it will happen you will get an email from us so make sure you have the right contact information on uh, on f success um, and uh, uh, so so it'll be an email and then it'll lead to multiple zoom invites or or, or um, video uh, interviews that we'll have with you so uh, basically, email will be the main form of communication. It won't be through F-Success most of the time. Um, so make sure that you are checking, uh, checking your inbox. Sounds good. And, so, and go ahead. So, so just to, and, and just to, to answer another question that was asked in there, um, since we mentioned F-Success, the main application is, is on F-Success. But if you're having problems with F-Success, login problems or uh whatever kind of technical issues just email us and we'll work with you to to get the info info we need for for the application um you know we want to do whatever we can to, to really connect with you and and help you apply so and on that same note jeffrey i just want to reiterate reiterate to everyone that you can email them at comcastsportstech.com um, which can also be found on our website so um we talked applications you know we encourage everyone to apply um, let's definitely talk about what happens, you know, if you are selected as one of these teams into the program. Um, so I think we all remember our first day of school, those jitters, you know, are you prepared and everything. Um, so what happens after being accepted and up until the first day? Yeah, so after you're, you're accepted, you'll, you'll hear from us via, you know, after your interviews, you'll hear from us via email. Um, and we'll we'll hop on a call just to go over the uh, the, the next steps and 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 get you moving forward. Um, we're first going to put you in touch with uh, our legal counsel and and start talking to you about stock purchase agreement, program agreement, and kind of all these technical agreements. A lot of that those first conversations will also um, just be you know talking to our, our our chief legal counsel about the structure of your business right now what you're thinking about doing with it in the future, what your goals and aspirations are, and how we can start thinking about that structure to give you the, you know, the best chance moving forward and best support you, um, both within our program and, and as a company in general. Um, we're also gonna start, uh, you know, once, once you're onboarded with us, before the in-person program begins, um, our goal is to be able to connect you with uh, as many of our, as much of our network as possible, um, start making intros, give you uh, pre-reading and, and, and projects to start working on and just get you as integrated into our ecosystem as possible. We really hope that on day one of the in-person program can show up and we already have a relationship. You're already working on a million things and have a million questions to ask us and, and really want to push us on getting maximum value moving forward. Um, yeah, so that's awesome. what you can expect. And then you can also expect, sorry, but finally to uh, call, email any of us uh, whenever before the program, we're, we're on your team. We want to help you. Good to hear it. So, um, Jose, Jeffrey had mentioned onboarding. Can you describe um, briefly what that process looks like for us, please? Yeah, so, uh, uh, yeah, Jeffrey touched on it briefly. There, there's going to be some legal uh, work, uh, depending on the stage of your company. A lot of the companies we're talking on, uh, talking to are, are pretty mature, um, and they have revenue, they have customers, et cetera. So they, they figure this stuff out. But if, you, if there's anything off with your incorporation or, you know, corporate documents or any of that, we help you. Um, in that process to make sure that you're buttoned up. Um, the purpose of that is not just our own, you know, desire for having organized companies, but rather, you know, getting you in the best shape possible. So, you know, in two months or three months when you are speaking to investors and going through diligence um, that, you know, you don't have to spend three additional months trying to get everything buttoned up. Um, and the more mature your company is, the the more complicated it becomes to to fix anything, any any glaring issues that happen. So we want to make sure you're in the best place possible, legally and structurally, to quickly move into partnerships and 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 closing deals with investors. And more importantly, because it's non dilutive capital, when you're talking to a potential uh, customer, you know, golf or or Sky Sports, et cetera, and they say they want to do a deal with you, you want to have everything buttoned up and all of your your stuff in place so that it's a you know there's no 
uh, there's nothing slowing down that that process of, of getting a deal with you. So we that's part a big part of the onboarding process is making sure that's uh, all figured out. Um, and then there will be somebody asked questions around um, what happens when we join. If we join, you know, it's months away before the program starts. Um, what happens between now and then, as, as Jeffrey kind of touched on, we we try to open up as you know as many doors as possible for you. But once we've accepted you, you know, we're we're going to work with you to to get you going and get the ball. Um, start putting momentum behind your company. So we'll start making those introductions, connections to, to mentors, to strategic partners, et cetera. So uh, somebody asked that question, but yes, it does start uh, once you're accepted. And specifically once you sign all the documents and everything's kind of uh, lined up, we'll start making those introductions. Um, and so that can be as soon as, you know, a month from now. Um, and then, you know, some teams might be as close to, you know, a month before program starts, which is we, we'd hope we have everyone buttoned up uh, at that point. Yeah, that's awesome. So um, once these teams are in there, onboarded and ready to go, um, talking about our program, do these teams all move at the same pace? Are they all at the same level? Um, you touched lightly on the maturity of teams. Um, so can you comment on that, please? And, you know, where everyone kind of finds their place and falls in line? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned there and also uh, previously about our, the customized nature of our program, uh, every every company is going to be moving at a slightly different pace. There will be a general kind of uh, beat that you'll be going through. Um, but if if we're working on you know bringing experts on you know growth hacking or, or or doing corporate sales and you've already figured that out, we'll work with you on something else. Uh, and we'll, we will not waste your time. This is not you know just a school lecture kind of scenario. This is all very applicable stuff from you know world experts working with you. Um, to, to bring as much value as possible to your companies. Again, because we're on the same boat together. We own a piece of your company. You're in our program. We want your success as much as you do. Uh, so we, we won't force you to do something just for the sake of it. Uh, so there will be a different, different pacing for companies going through. Um, and, uh, and, and that, that's going to look, uh, as I mentioned, differently, where if, if, you're, if you've already figured everything out, you say on day one, look, we're, you know, USA Swimming is our perfect partner. We want to start talking to them. We're going to work with you to make that happen. Um, and, and if, if it looks like you're not ready, you know, because, uh, your technology is not ready or the way your, your, your deck and everything isn't quite lined up, we're going to help you, uh, get that ready. So you put your best foot forward when you speak to our partners and to future partners outside of our, our group. So Jeffrey, Jose obviously just told us all that, you know, people are going to move at their own pace based on what their strengths and weaknesses are. Um, when they're in the program, are the teams working together or separately, um, even though they are moving at different paces? Yeah, that's a good question. It, it's a combination of both. They're, they're, they're working on their own projects and it's their own business. Um, but there, there's a lot of intermingling that happens uh, with, with the teams. And that's one of the things that we really focus on when we're, when we're putting together the entire cohort. We're not going to bring in two companies that are directly competing with each other and at each other's throats and, you know, or whatever. Um, but we do really look to, to create those connections between companies, uh, make it so that companies are interested in what each other is doing, can share ideas, um, technologies, and, and, and kind of get into it with each other and, and, and really collaborate and, and build a community. Uh, both during the program as well as uh, after the program, once you're alumni, we look forward to continuing to talk to you, but you can also look forward to continuing to connect with the, uh, the alumni that went through the cohort with you, as well as the broader alumni in, in our, our entire network. Um, and then I just uh, wanted to, um, Jose, since you mentioned USA Swimming, I wanted to address Clifton's question here um, about partners giving uh, any indication of what they're specifically looking for in this cohort. And Clifton mentioned USA Cycling, who's one of our our awesome partners. Uh, we, we are lucky to have a great relationship with, with our partners. And I, I personally think this is one of the coolest aspects of my job is, is getting to, to talk to those partners and say, hey, we found this company that's making this new biking tech or this new swimming tech. Like, what do you guys think? And hearing what they're working on, what they're looking for, what they're not looking for, and, and just kind of creating those connections. And, uh, and so, yeah, that is a, a big part of the conversation we have. So Clifton, when you apply, um, if we get to that stage, it's, it's likely that we will bring, bring up what you're talking to, to our, our team at USA Cycling. Um, and in, in the later stages of interviews, it's also likely that 
um, you know, one of the one of the people at the core team of USA Cycling or one of our partners could be on that interview call with you saying, hey, answer this for me directly. Let's hear what you're doing. Awesome. Um, yeah, I always thought it was interesting being a part of the program and hearing the conversations just at, you know, the microwave or you know, walking <laughs> yeah. through the hall between all our founders, um, you know, because everyone has their strengths and, you know, everyone falls short in certain areas. So I think it's awesome to always watch our founders um, become that family, like you said, Jose, but, you know, really leverage each other regardless of what pace they're at or what place they're at. Um, so that was always one of my favorite parts of being in the space. Um, so Jeffrey, you started answering that question to talk about partners and everything. Um, how do these startups that are coming through our program, how are they going to provide value to our partners? And then what value, um, Jose, you can answer the second half, what value do the partners add to the startups? So first of all, um, what, what value do startups provide to the partners? I, I don't know. That's a good question. That's why we want to talk to you so much. We want to hear your ideas and your inspiration and, and, and hear new, new ways to, to bring value to our partners, um, to the sport. Uh, and and to the world, that's that's where we're really excited is, is working with you on that. Um, that said, a couple of the more concrete things are um, bringing interesting and motivated teams that can infuse new ideas into their organizations, bringing uh, new technologies, new ways to think, bringing new ways to connect with to connect with fans, to connect with um, members of the the sports organization, new ways not only on the fan side but on the business broadcast side, new ways to, uh, uh, to broadcast that. Um, the sky's the limit. Um, you know, we can look at our investment areas again and, and go from there. I'll let Jose uh, cover the, the opposite angle. Yeah, so our partners, uh, if, if you, the cool thing about this program, these aren't just a bunch of logos on a screen and, and you know, just kind of trying to show off a bunch of um, companies to, to look cool. These, these organizations we're working with have all committed to work with the startups that join our program. Um, and they want to do deals uh, with you. They want to actually find ways to integrate your technologies. Um, so if, if a company gets into our program, uh, it's because at least one of our partners has said, there's something interesting about this company. We want to work with them. Uh, that's the minimum. Uh, on the other side, you might have two, three, four companies or organizations who've said, we want to work with your company. And that, that's amazing. Um, so at the minimum, you'll have the opportunity to work pretty closely uh, with at least one of these organizations to figure out how to either integrate their te your technology with them or where you need to get to to make sure that you're um, in a trajectory where, where um, it's solving a problem that they're interested in. Um, uh, and you'll be able to get constant feedback from them. Um, in addition, uh, even if a company, one of our organization or, and our partners hasn't directly said they want to work with you, um, they're still available for you, uh, to you as a resource. So if you're working on something that, you know, USA Swimming um, uh, could give great feedback on, but they're not necessarily interested in your technology, uh, they're still available to, you know, depending on who you want to speak with, you know, their head of, you know, training or fitness or technologies, they'll still uh, be open to giving you feedback. And, um, and what we found and, and what we've already seen with some of the companies we've been speaking to is, you know, five minutes, uh, on the on the call with one of these um, one of these individuals of these organizations uh, can completely change the trajectory of your company, uh, either saving you years of work going down the completely wrong path, um, or or opening doors to um, exactly the next you know set of tests uh, data that you need for for your company, or even opening up opportunities to pilot. Uh, so you'll you'll be able to work uh, really closely with these uh, with these groups. It's not just um, you know. Uh, one call uh, during the entire program and, and, and moving on. This is, uh, this is the real deal. Yeah, and, and I think that, you know, shows that we have that continued relationship with our alumni, but the partners will have the same, you know, aspect of that as well. Uh -huh. um, so we've talked a lot about a lot of our first, what a first day might look like, what your first onboarding might look like with us. Um, I'm going to launch a poll to the audience and let's talk about what was your first trophy. So I'm launching the poll now. If everyone wants to take a moment, um, if there's something not listed on there that you got your first trophy in, feel free to drop it in the chat. Um, but let's just kind of see what everyone was up to, you know, when they got their first. Oh, it looks like it looks we, like a panelist can't vote. Darn. 
<laughs> Jeffrey, do you want us to tell us what your first trophy was? <laughs> no, I don't know what my, it's gotta be some baseball trophy from, from elementary school. Jose, do you Mine was a your... kindergarten, a kindergarten poetry medal uh, in, in, uh, in Spain. Um, and I have no idea what it says, but I remember the, the drawing I did. That was great. Awesome. That's, that's the most Jose thing I've ever heard. <laughs> look, look, look next, next week I'm going to go for another medal. There's here in, in Boulder, Colorado, where I live, we're doing the, uh, the Pearl Street Mile next week. One mile race, Super. which is short. It's only a mile, but it's a fast mile. It's an yeah. all out sprint. And I'm, uh, so so I see a few answers coming in um, on the survey which we'll share the results shortly. We had a lot of baseball, basketball, soccer, um, super cool. Someone had a theater one, um, I'll share. I see in our chat, Carrie from our marketing team here, she got hers in swimming. We have an Australia football one, so, um, and even some NASCAR. So there's definitely a lot of firsts in here. Um, and I think it's cool to see the difference in results, um, just to see how many, you know, different types of interest in everything we have here. Um, so I think that's awesome. Um, moving on, let's answer a few questions that we've gotten from the audience. So guys, feel free to keep them coming in the Q&A. Um, I will definitely um, be on the lookout from them. So um, Jose, our first question actually is from someone in India. So if a startup gets selected for the program, do they have their own mentor the whole time? Um, right. So uh, each company will have two to three uh, lead mentors that you'll be working with. Um, and some teams have up to five or more uh, that you're meeting with every week for at least an hour. Um, these are individuals that you both met uh, beforehand. Uh, you, you have both said you're interested and you commit to working together during the program. Often these, these mentors end up being advisors for you in the future. or You keep working with them post-program also. Um, but at least are committed during the 12 weeks of the program. And in addition, we have over 400 mentors that are part of the uh, Boomtown and Farm and Sports Tech family that uh, are resources for you uh, that um, maybe you don't need to speak, for example, with a UX designer every week for an hour, but they're available for a one-off call or, or, or meeting with you and give you some feedback um, uh, kind of on a one-off basis. So you have a, a broad range of skill sets to tap into plus kind of like a deeper set of um you know three to five lead mentors that you're meeting with constantly um and that number um is uh uh what we found is teams often uh want to meet with more but they're like okay we actually physically can't meet with more mentors and so those mentors are actually available to you after you graduate from the program too uh, so you don't have to like feel like you're going to miss out if you don't use them during the the program itself Awesome. Yeah, um, we have a large, large mentor network. So um, I do always think that's one of the best perks. Um, there's someone for every team and every skill set and stuff. Um, kind of on that same note, um, Jeffrey, you can answer this one. Would there be some type of technology expert for support there as well? Yeah, um, we have both in-house staff who runs the runs the actual program, and, and then like Jose was mentioning, uh, lead mentors and, and a massive mentor network, in addition to a ton of great resources from Comcast and, and all of our affiliated partners. And so there's not one single technology person that you get to talk to. It's a whole host of different technology people, depending on exactly what industry you're working on and what kind of technology and, and what makes the most sense for you. And, and that's something that we will uh, really work with you on the very beginning of the program to, to set up with you. Awesome. Thank you for that. So sure. um, on the same topic of, you know, kind of knowing strengths and everything. Um, we had a question where someone was concerned about their pitch deck yeah. and submitting one that might not fully be what we are looking for. Um, yeah. Jeffrey, do you want to comment on that, especially with, if yeah. we, you know, ask for in the applications? Yeah, that's that's a good concern. I, 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 I got to say, I, I, I appreciate the concern and appreciate that you're, you're thinking about how to submit the best deck. Um, we'd love to see your current best incarnation of your pitch deck. And we know that you're a startup and you haven't done this before. And one of the things we look forward to working with you on is taking the first version of pitch deck, ripping it apart, putting it all back together and making it the best pitch deck you, you, you could ever have with you. And then working with you on being able to pitch it 
uh, so that when you get to demo day and you're standing up there, um, it, it, it sounds amazing and everybody is amazed and, and you're really proud of it. And then going forward, even after the program, when you talk to investors, um, you know, business people, you know, partners into the future, you're able to, to use that deck, be able to pitch it well, have the skills to refine your pitch and continue to evolve it and the skills to evolve your pitch deck. Uh, so we, we really look forward to working with you on that and are psyched when companies come to us and they say, this is our idea. We think it's great. This is the first version of our pitch deck. And we're looking forward to really working with you on, on, on tackling some of the issues and moving forward. And, and one important thing to note is pitch decks are not required to apply to our program. So uh, if point. you don't, if submit it, if you've got, if it can, if it can add value, um, we may get to it, maybe not. Uh, because what we really look for, we we ask in, in the application uh, itself. So don't stress out if you feel like the, your deck is not um, where you want it to be. Yeah, I, th I think that's good um, on both of your answers that, you know, you're not requiring it right now. And then, you know, if you do come to the program, we'll make sure you definitely have those skill sets leaving um, or something put together with the help of others. So um, I do want to comment. I'm seeing a lot of questions come in about the current situation of the world and if the per pandemic um, persists. And I just want to let everyone um, listening know that as COVID evolves, we will certainly adjust. But as of today, we look forward to seeing you all in person um, here in Atlanta. So um, during the program, Jose, do you want to comment on how the startups get monitored and how their progress is monitored? When we, uh, during the program, during the first uh, two weeks of the program, we work with you to identify the KPI, the key performance indicators that are most important to tracking the progress of your company. So again, that's customized for each business. And we work with you to then identify the milestones you wanna hit, uh, set up the plan for what it will look like to be able to hit those milestones and then help keep you accountable during the process uh, and during the program on, um, on hitting those milestones. We also uh, put a lot of emphasis on reporting and, and, um, and keeping constant updates of both existing and future stakeholders um, because communicating what you're doing is, uh, is, I'd say, as important as actually doing what you're doing, um, uh, especially at the early stages of your company. Uh, so we, uh, we work with you and, and customize those metrics for you, with you rather. Okay. Um, I'm going to keep going through a few more questions here from the audience as we're wrapping up. Um, so, Jeffrey, can you tell us um, if their company is not incorporated into the United States, will they need to do that? Not to apply. Certainly not. You don't have to have any kind of formal legal company uh, formed to apply to us um, and even to talk to us. And it really doesn't hurt your chances of, uh, of getting an interview with us or, or starting to talk to us. One of the first things that we'll do, even at the beginning of onboarding, the, the second call after you're officially invited, is to talk about your corporate structure, uh, how your company is all set up, and what makes the most sense going forward. So if you're a foreign co company, um, if you're a zero company on paper, or if you're you know any structure of US company, Talk to us, and and we'll work with you to to to, you know, um, optimize it um, to make make it possible for you to move forward. Awesome, yeah. And I do on that same note think it's important to note um, for everyone watching that we usually have companies um, on a global scale. So a lot of our cohorts have people um, from in and out of the country, in and out of Atlanta. Um, so it, we encourage you to apply no matter where you are in the world, um, and we love it. Um, I think. Bringing yeah. people in from different cultures and walks of life and everything just shows new um, interests and aspects of different issues. So mm -hmm. I always think that's an interesting part of the people you meet and that come through our program. Sure. Um, let's ask uh, two more questions. Um, and this one goes to both of you. So what would you like to see happen in the sports and entertainment space that excites you? Jeffrey, um, you want to start us off? I, yeah, don't... First of all, don't get me started on that because I can talk about cool tech all day that I think is cool. One of them that I'm really interested in in the sports entertainment space is latency, uh, network latency, streaming latency, um, the ability to or the potential for uh, um, 
connecting uh, your TV with your with your phone with your second screen and 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 making sure that all viewers of a game are seeing the exact same frame of the game at the exact same second and that everybody's apps are synchronized that can enable all sorts of interactive experiences all sorts of betting experiences esports experiences um, and, and I think it's going to be it's going to make a, a huge change and, and enable a lot of a lot of new use cases. Um, awesome. and, and that and that's either uh, deterministic latency or zero to low latency. Yeah, you you have a few people agreeing with you in the chat that um, latency can definitely be a pain point. Yeah, so, thank you, Wally. I agree. That, <laughs> I, I'm glad that you agree. Jose, do you want to comment on something that you'd like to see, or even just something that excites you in the sports yeah. industry right now? Absolutely, I love the the idea of being able to. Um, uh, open up the doors to reaching elite performance and, and elite leagues to anybody. Uh, it doesn't matter where where you grew up, uh, your resources uh, financially or, or even logistically or geographically uh, growing up, uh, to have somebody who has the skills to become a professional athlete or even uh, a college athlete uh, and giving them the opportunities to, um, to, to get to that level uh, and not be held back just because they didn't know how to speak to recruiters or their coach didn't know the right way of promoting their athletes, you know, when they were in a club team or in high school or middle school or whatever else. Uh, I think that's really exciting to be able to, um, to both improve the quality of play at the top levels because they have more access to players, uh, but also open up the doors for, for many more people to uh, have a chance if that's what they want to pursue. Right. It sounds like the two of you are on a verge of uh, applying for the accelerator versus help run it. So <laughs> <laughs> sounds right. like we have good ideas all around. Um, I want to thank you both for joining us today. Um, I appreciate your responses um, and I appreciate the audience for joining us as well. Um, if we weren't able to answer your questions or if you come up with something within these next few days, um, definitely reach out to us on your favorite social platform. So we're, we can be found at Comcast Sport or you can email us at ComcastSportsTech.com. So again, I want to stress that the application deadline is August 15th. Um, we are looking for that next big sports idea. So please send them to us. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out and we look forward to seeing what you all are working on. So um, that's it for our show today. I hope everyone had a good one and uh, we look forward to seeing those applications fly in. Thank you, Natalie. Yeah, thank you guys. You have a good one. Thank you, Natalie. See you guys.